Hello everyone, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and I wanted to announce something very special to the Atari community. After 35 years and the help of CyberOne.org and Atari hackers around the world, we have managed to resurrect something long since been gone for 33 some odd years. We've been able to use an Atari computer, both in emulation and in real hardware, to access the remaining bit of the Plato network that is running on CyberOne.org. To do this, we are essentially using a, an Atari 800 with an 850 interface and a Wi-Fi 232 modem that connects to CyberServe.org. This also works in Altera using its serial modem integration, 850 virtual 850 interface, and using its built-in Telnet protocol to dial out to cyberserve.org. And I will go ahead and show you a bit of how all this works. But first, what is Plato? Well, Plato was the probably the first educational time-sharing system that was ever developed. It was developed by the University of Illinois and Control Data Corporation to create a comprehensive system for educational courseware. From 1960 until roughly 2006, Plato served literally hundreds of thousands of users spread all across uh, the US, as well as some international users as well. It did this by using a network of CDC Cyber Super Mini Computers connected together and providing uh, 1200 baud modem uplinks to special Plato terminals, which were very special in and of themselves, as you can see here. This Plato terminal is a Plato 5 terminal built roughly in 1977. It consists of a keyboard and a touchscreen display that is built from a uh, large plasma screen display as you can see here it's orange on black and yes it does contain a 16 by 16 element touch display for touchscreen interactivity you can see here also a standard alphanumeric keyboard with the gray keys being the standard alphanumerics the white keys were special keys for things such as next lab uh, help etc now in the 80s, CDC and the University of Illinois decided to offer what they called the Homelink surface, which would allow microcomputers with the correct terminal software to be able to access this Plato code courseware as it would emulate a Plato 5 terminal and allow you to use these things. In 1981, Atari started the work on the first version of their Plato cartridge. They wound up doing three versions of this, and the person in charge of that was Andrew Wu, who came over from the University of Illinois uh, to Atari specifically to work on this Plato cartridge, creating a revolutionary scaling algorithm which allowed the 512 by 512 pixel display used on the Plato 5 terminal to be shown on the Atari's high resolution 320 by 192 display. Finally, in the summer of 1984, Atari made its formal announcement for the release of the Plato cartridge and decided to let it out into the world. Um, they also announced that the subscription to the Homelink service would be approximately $5 an hour and you would have access to roughly all of the services that Plato had to offer without having to rent a Plato terminal which could even at that time cost up to $1,000 a month. So it was one hell of a deal, and there were a few people, including me, who took advantage of this particular offer and got to see this system in its prime when it was running. Finally, in 2004, a group of uh, ex-Plato engineers and CDC cyber uh, aficionados, different hackers, got together to form CyberOne.org with the express purpose of bringing back the Plato system, which had been decommissioned some time earlier. They took an early backup of the system, 
put it onto a, uh, an emulated CDC cyber system and were able to bring up the entire Plato system over the next two years. So now you can go to cyberone.org, download the PTERM software, request a sign-on, and instantly be able to access the facilities that were present on the old Plato system. It's all there, and it's quite remarkable. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and show my P-Term installation here and take you through a little bit of it now. This is P-Term running on an IBM PC running Windows right now. And I just opened the program and it's asking me to press next to begin because it's already connected to the other side. At this point, you see a uh, time display, a number of users, Welcome to Cybus, which was the final name for Plato. I go ahead and enter my user ID. Press enter, which is next. Type the name of your Cybus group. My Cybus group is INETD. It's showing us here that I need to also press shift stop to continue. So in my case, uh, the stop key is F10, so shift F10. It will now ask me for my password. And you can see even here, um, they went to great lengths to try and obfuscate the passwords even back during this time in the late 70s um, by changing the number of characters output as you typed in a password. Now, since I registered as an author, I immediately go into what's called author mode and it gives me the ability to directly jump to a lesson. If I were to have registered as an explorer, I would have gone to a system which was called, a, a lesson which was called Big Jump, which is just essentially a big menu of all the things available on the system. By default, Big Jump takes you to games because everybody wants to play games, that's cool. And you can use the menu there to take an advance through the different lists. You can jump to uh, miscellaneous other things that might be of interest. You can also jump to what are called notes files, which you can think of notes files today as uh, forum posts. That's literally what they are. And in fact, if the term notes seems somewhat familiar to you, that's because uh, Lotus Notes originally was derived from this very system, from its node system here, all the way back from 1974. So we can go ahead and go back to the games, for instance. And I will go ahead and just show ch uh, checkers just to show. I'll jump to lesson 22, or I could have just typed checkers. And you'll see here a simple little help screen showing you how to play. I will go ahead and just tell the computer to play both sides for demonstration. And you can see here that it provided a very nice graphical interface for a wide variety of different things. We'll go ahead and stop. Since I'm an author here, it gives me some additional information as to how much computer time this all used, as well as how much memory, which is nice. We can see others, such as Asteroids, which this really needs to be played on the ASCII terminal. It plays much faster on the ASCII terminal, but you can see right there, yeah, it's, it's an Asteroids game. I'll go ahead and actually jump to Moria. We'll go ahead and leave here. Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll just go to Moria. Will it let me do it this time? Ah, 
it just no it won't let me do it darn it oh well um yeah so just different things that you can go to you can of course go to notes which is just either notes or if you know the particular notes file you want to jump to you can see all sorts of different ones these are the top level ones announcements public notes help and support etc and here in the public notes file you can see a note that uh, I started number 105 uh, detailing the work that's been going on for Atari Play-Doh we can go to it by typing its number and as you can see here the start of the thread we hit lab to go through all the different pieces of the thread and so on and so on and so on there are also chat facilities um, tons of other games tons of uh, educational material that you can that you can get your hands on if there's over 16,000 applications sitting on this particular installation alone so there's a whole world in here that needs to be explored so I'll go ahead and log off here leave and hit, hit shift stop again which will put me all the way back at the beginning and from this point here if you have your uh, particular hardware requirements for your Atari you can go to Atari Mania search for the loaning phone download the ROM and put it onto a flash cartridge if it's a real machine or just download the ROM for an emulation and at that point you can take and configure your Atari computer. Once we start our Atari computer here, we attach our 850 interface. And we need the full protocol handler as it downloads it from the system here. We don't want any throw off. We, we don't want to change these options. This is important. And we also want to keep this pretty much as default as well. Emulate Talnet protocol and allow now outbound connections. No terminal type. Keep this at default. Boom. Once that's in place, we can attach the cartridge. standard 8k cartridge and at this point we'll see the learning phone sign on at this point you are literally in terminal mode so since we're in emulation here I will issue the command for Atira to dial out via internet oops dial out via internet And that is cyberserve.org port 8005 local echo is on when it starts so you see double characters this is fine it will go away in a moment and as you see here press next to begin and usually this first pass takes a moment but once it actually comes up we'll see the sign on screen and everything will appear to be normal I would like to say that I am actually trying to work with the Cyber One people right now to provide a terminal type that will be properly matched to this cartridge because right now the ASCII port on port 8005 automatically assumes that any any terminal that connect can connect to it can interpret the color codes. So as you can see here, our sign on screen is similar to what we saw in the terminal. 49 users, welcome to Cybus. Type in my Cybus name just like before. Press next, which is enter. Type my name of my Cybus group. INET D. And in this case, I need to use the start key along with the uh, shift and stop keys, which the stop key in this case seems to be backslash. 
go forward, no problem, type in my password. And from this point, we're dropped back off where I was before, in this case, in the author mode. We can, of course, go back to where I was. Everything works as before. We'll just go ahead and go straight to checkers. Oops, is it zero checkers? Shift uh, F2D, there we go. No preparing checkers. And as you can see, it's drawing just like it did on the other terminal. It's not only doing its initial game initialization in the back, but it is also downloading a character set to the terminal so that it can take and draw the checkerboard. Again, next to play. And you may notice here that sometimes the scaling produces characters that you can't always see. That's no problem. You can hold down the control key to zoom in and use your joystick to zoom in and see what each piece is here. Quite nice, I think. So next, and here we go. And as you can see, it's pretty much with the exception that of course this is slower because the data rate is slower you get the same experience. We go ahead and tell it to play both sides and you can see that it's just moving around and doing its thing just fine. We'll go ahead and shift stop to get out of here. Oops, wrong one, sorry. Different key set. Mm -hmm. Now, here, of course, we get our t tips and DAPM measurements, whatever, since I'm an author. But we can also take and go into PB notes as well. And you can see because of the additional color codes and whatnot that it's sending, you're seeing some additional uh, garbage on the screen that you wouldn't normally not otherwise see. We're trying to get rid of that. We'll go ahead and go to, to note 105. And of course you can see, there's our note. Lab, go to the next one. You can zoom in, of course, if you want to. You can see some of the additional con uh, control codes that are being sent. And so on and so on. And so on. I'm actually going to try Moria one more time. It just doesn't want me to jump there as an author. Let me see if I can get to it from here. Hmm. We'll try something else. As you can see, big jump with the exception of the color codes works fine. We'll go ahead and do something simple like uh, biorhythm or just uh, air fight something. Let's see, baseball, basketball, bingo, etc. Hmm. Yeah, biorhythm, where are you? 17. 
Dump 17. And you can see the older programs that don't output control codes, they look just fine. Graphical explanations. And you can see that this looks and works very well as a 1200 bits per second service. It's extremely efficient at sending out data. The experience is, is quite amazing and it was this good back in the day too. So we'll go ahead and stop this here. Fine. Uh, boom. Do some more. You got a battle, you got battleship. Play against the computer. And so on. So I really recommend everybody just to take and if, start from Big Jump if you want to, look at the fact files, look at the note files, see what all is on here because there is so much stuff that has been made on here and I haven't even touched the educational stuff. So you can see. Mm -hmm. Two, five, four. Let's do glacier battleships and so on. Yeah. And as you can see, very much ahead of its time. All just graphical feedback and the like. All over a 1200 bits per second connection. Go ahead and shift F2L out of here. Boom. Okay. Other things we can other things we can get into. So many. Here we go. Let's go miscellaneous here. Basic typing. Demo pack, that sort of thing. Let's, let's look at the demo pack. I'm curious. Come on, there you go. And you can see this one doesn't have any color codes to it, so it looks fine. Any message here? No, 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 no. Yeah. So. Great. You jump out. Q is done with this option. Shift F10. Yeah. Okay.
I'm trying to think of one that might exist here. Mm. Got a fine one here. Different notes files for games, etc. Useful lessons. And so on. So I hope I can go ahead and leave the system finally by doing the same thing to get back to the main menu, do it again, and that will disconnect me from the system. Or I can sign back on again with a different sign-on. So, you know, there you go. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this. Um, I will take and make more in-depth videos as time goes on and hopefully as the terminal client uh, really firms up and works better. We may even decide to modify the terminal client to accept higher data rates. We don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget, if you want to, you can hit me up either on Atari Age or you can talk to me on Plato. I am Chalk909, T S C H A K 909, in the INET D group. So, uh, until next time, guys. See you later.